Hey everybody, it's your buddy Beard Grizzly, and let me get in before Where's Guardian School and you're just a lore guy, stick to talking about lore, you putts. To the first, Guardian School is still my main major goal to work on, but I can't help it when Bungie drops this stuff on my head. The second, yes, I'm mainly lore, but when large glaring topics like these show their ugly head, I have to talk about them. I do the community a disservice by not talking about them as accurately and openly as I can, sharing my own viewpoint to boot. If that's still not a good enough reason for you to hear my opinion on this subject, however, the unsubscribe button is down there in red. We're here to always have discussions, especially on topics as large as these. Bungie tends to review a lot of content, and if I happen to have anyone from Bungie that watches my videos, then I most definitely want to share my opinion on a subject, especially when I see my Discord and Twitter blow up with points made that need to be heard from my community. I have a few different points to really break down with my opinions on today's topic as well, ranging from cost, value, perspective, and perception. But again, these are opinions. And what a doozy of an opinion do I have with the Iron Banner emote box. For usual, I have my points where I am both for and against practices like this, and my list of against is still pretty high, offset by additional practices that Bungie has implemented into the title, mainly in the form of the expansion passes that we've harped on in the past. Let's start off with the major idea, which is cost. This bundle costs a grand total of $10 US, and hosts two tokens and an emote. Thought I was going to say two tokens and a blue. Eh? You were thinking it, don't lie. One of the tokens is a fire team medallion worth 50 bright dust. These can be purchased at all times from Eververse and they help with more EXP gains. The second is a gleaming boon of the crucible where really these are just a gleaming boon of excuse me. It gives you a random Eververse gift at the end of a Crucible match, which basically values a portion of an Eververse item to everyone on the team at the end of the match, and are valued at 600 Bright Dust, also purchasable at an any point from Tess. Lastly, you get the Iron Salute Exotic Emote, and the only reason it's exotic is because Bungie decided to make it exotic. Really, it's an emote. Still, exotic emotes are priced around 3250 bright dust. See, what I'm getting at from this breakdown is we're purchasing a bundle for 1100 silver, but that values out to 3900 bright dust. Just, it's not actually spendable the way bright dust is usually spendable. This is a bundle that's meant to show a value to you and make it worthwhile. Bright dust is really the currency that matters, and it's really the price of the items that pop up within the Eververse storefront and rotate on a weekly basis. Basically, these bundles actually serve to give you value to your money spent directly into the system, but they're rare and far between, and oftentimes don't fit the goal. We had one with the Cold Heart ornament from day one, along with a few other things packed into the Sub-Zero bundle. This doesn't really make it right, however. Additionally, we have to compare the price of other items from Eververse, and we'll at least compare 5 Bright Engrams, or their equivalent, at being valued at 800 silver. This would open up for more Bright Dust and chances at other exotics, or standard emotes, and other items within the Eververse system. It stands as a comparison tool, just to give you an idea of clear value being presented by this bundle. In terms of actual cost, this poses the first issue. I just bounce from one currency to the next, and that is absolutely insane to me. Just that thinking is insane to me. Bright Dust actually has a higher value to Bungie than Silver does. Wrap your head around that one for a moment. I know mobile games that have less issues with showcasing their currencies, but if I go down this road any further, I'll be beating a dead horse that several others have been on for the last several months. Hence why we're here talking about this today, to beat a dead horse, obviously. Also horse. Bungie needs to cut out this middleman of silver and start giving a simple value to Bright Dust. I think it would clear up a lot of the confusion in terms of what items in Eververse are actually worth, similar to how it was in Destiny 1. That's point one. Point two goes further into the cash idea, which is the subjective. Is it worth it to you? Personally, no. I'll be over here telling you to wait a minute because I couldn't be bothered with this emote. I don't find it cool, I don't find it awesome, I don't find it intriguing or interesting. Even if it were in the pool of items for Iron Banner, I wouldn't push myself to go for it or grab it up. 
I'm really just not a fan of it. It doesn't mean you agree with me, of course, and you have every right not to. That's where subjectivity is something we have to answer for ourselves. Same with value. That said, I still want to be able to get it within the game and play to earn it because it's from an event that generally returns every month or so. Iron Banner is an integral part of the game at this point. It's also, admittedly, one of the only events left that does still come back and isn't being reworked, at least now with the testing field of 6 vs 6 combat being done and over with. This is why Bungie can't afford to make decisions like this, sullying the name of one of the only events they still have going on within the typical event cycle. There are still a fair few other items to be received from Iron Banner, but my argument would be to take anything and everything Iron Banner related and place it within the event itself. That was the entire point of what we screamed for to put items like sparrows and ghost shells at least to the pool of items for events like Iron Banner and faction rallies. It was to give value to those events and take some of that perceived value away from Eververse, which, Bungie, you desperately need to do. This is the largest failing of this bundle. It isn't that it costs $10, though we'll get there in a moment, but it's the idea that it's tied to the Iron Banner. If it were something like Mic Drop or Popcorn or any other number of exotic emotes, you might think about picking it up and not think twice about it, save for the cost, which, again, we'll get to. The fact that it's linked with Iron Banner just makes it seem like, and really does impress upon me, the push to make some additional profit from an in-game event that has been able to stand up as one that your contenders haven't railed into the ground just yet. I really wish that wasn't the case, but this falls back to a word I use often anymore perspective. The perspective of this emote shows me a tie to a group of guardians that now carry a legacy within the game's lore, and carry a special place in others' hearts for the sake of it being a favorite event in Destiny 1. Now, again, feelings are feelings. We don't know the basis for this decision or who at Bungie made it. We also don't know who at Bungie looked at those that made the decision and told them, hey, this is a really bad idea, and it's probably going to get a lot of Reddit posts hating on it because it's a really bad idea. Someone's thinking it at this point. If you don't think so, you're not paying attention to what else happened with Warmind, and frankly, I can't be bothered to argue with you. This one instance doesn't dissuade me from liking the game. It doesn't reverse anything that Bungie has done for me and the community since Warmind. It's a pretty crappy thing to do, however, and it's one that Bungie needs to get called out for on making a bad misstep like this, tying something to Eververse, once again, that has no business being there in an event that exists to be grinded out over a season, really, over the next about four months. Additionally, I'd like to ensure we nip this now, in case it carries over into faction rallies when they return or to other events that are not limited time. Limited time events I can see there being some side purchase for, but this is due to every other game seemingly following with this practice. There are caveats to this discussion, however, so let's get into them. The perception of value is just as important as the perception of intent. The intent with a paid bundle is to make money, but what you decide to give with that bundle needs to also be explained further, or the perception of value. Bungie has ridiculed its own system by not showing the amount of bright dust you actually earn from silver. In fact, it's random. It falls in line with loot boxes that are out there otherwise, like currently with Overwatch or what was going on with Battlefront 2. But when partnered with the expansions that the games asked you to also pay for to experience the entire title, this doesn't work quite as well. There are three sources that the consumer is being asked to pay into when it comes to Destiny 2, and they've been there for a while now. This falls back on some topics I made about Eververse a while back, however, and it still holds true. First, there's the obvious of expansions and DLC packs. Then there are engrams that you're able to earn by simply playing the game, but still give random results, albeit drop duplication is now in place to avoid duplicate drops from Eververse. Obviously, these can also be purchased, and that's Source 2. Source 3 is in the form of paid bundles, at the cost of silver that doesn't always quantify back to exact values, with some bundles costing 900 silver, and you're still left spending the full $10 to have the amount needed for a bundle of that price for 1100 silver. 
This brings Silver into the question of why it's even still a thing. It isn't an account-wide paid currency, and it really seems like it's a means to save some processing money on credit cards, but that's a seems like with no proof. So, cash generates silver, generates bundles and engrams, which generates bright dust for items down the line that you may want. Because that wasn't confusing to begin with. I'm getting a bit off track here, looking into the overalls of Eververse as a value again, but it's just to show Bungie what it is they're asking us to take part in, and to not offer a value to the bundle that's listed here, minus one that's superficially created by higher-ups and those not taking part in the community voice. Basically guys that aren't Chris Barrett or at that level. The value proposition set up by these bundles looks good to what we know of within Eververse's system as a whole. I won't get into my long rant about how bundles and free-to-play games do the same thing, making the value look good to what's within their usual shop. It's the same thing as the value of a dollar. It's a human economy made by human beings with human instincts and human intent. It's no different in its manipulation, except one is able to buy goods and services outside and inside of a game. The same basic principles apply, however. Anyway, how does this practice stack up to other games out there, since we don't get to hear that side of the argument all the time? As it is, there might be some people that are staying away from microtransactions altogether or only play Destiny, so we have to kind of figure where the middle ground may be. Monster Hunter World also has the same basic idea of purchasing emotes, sticker bundles, and even some different costumes for in-game NPCs. The bundles that they offer are lower in price, when a couple of them are $4 US for three dances, another $8 US bundle for another three dances, several sticker packs for your hunter card and a few costumes for the handler, with a few other emotes sprinkled about. All of these are otherwise valued at 2 to $4 US, and I can't help but look at Destiny and go, Hey mate, you, uh, you have a value problem. When one emote and two tokens are valued at $10, even with just comparing it to Monster Hunter World, this is a bad value proposition. Especially towards a game that a large majority of the streamers and supporters that you had went over to, and it reminds us how much better value that we ended up getting from that game versus this one. That's just, you know, my two cents, though. Plus, there's no additional weird value here like you have with silver. It's just dollar for dollar value and nothing forcing you into another weird purchase type. I'm not buying Bitcoin here, Bungie. $10 should get me an emote, a sparrow, a ghost shell, at least 20 or more of each of the shaders from Iron Banner, or, you know, stop making them single use to begin with, and more like 10 or so fire team medallions, or again, just make that the common rate at which we earn EXP and stop screwing around. Even then, that $10 is valued differently for each person, so having a choose your own bundle kind of idea takes away the whole concept of perceived value and would put that into the player's hands, like you generally have with consumerism. Fun thought, isn't it? And seriously, this is one emote. We have some value that we hold within emotes because they can be used on a dime. You created the emote wheel just for us to take advantage of showing these things off. Evidently, you understand the appeal that they hold for us. But again, I have to stress, I really doubt this would be an issue save for the value prospect if it were another exotic emote. If it were popcorn or drop the mic or any other number of emotes, I just have this feeling it wouldn't be as awfully received. That you tied it behind Eververse under the guise of an Iron Banner emote is what miffs a lot of people. But $10 is just too damn much, quite frankly, no matter how I try to slice it. If you want me to pay $10, then you have to simply make it worth it for me. And so far, that is the thing you have failed at doing, is making it worth it to me as a customer. End of the day, that's what it comes down to. I'd like to see this system of paid bundles adopted more, but see the amount of items behind Eververse taken away. Simply put, this system needs to be slimmed down if paid bundles are going to exist, and if those paid bundles are actually going to have a direct dollar value, or, simply put, a better value behind them for the cost that you're asking. Whoever's in charge over at Bungie for these loot boxes the way that they are, you need to seriously start realizing you're hurting your image by continuing this, and boxes like these with little to no value for the customer only make you look worse 
Whereas you're in a time where your favor is actually going up. You need to continue that, not make it worse on yourself. I am happy to be playing Warmind Destiny 2 again, feeling interested in what's happening in this universe again, but you're not helping yourself by doing this. The only one you hurt, the only brand you hurt by presenting bundles at crazy high prices like these that have inconsistent values that do not respect the consumer's money, however, is yourself. You also hurt longtime fans that try their best to understand what you're doing. And as the meme says, It's time to stop! It's been time to stop, but it's insanely past that point now, Bungie. Still, I have a message for the players, those who are feeling affected by this. Those that dissent to Bungie's ideas, and really the ideas of the industry when it comes down to stuff like this, simply say to vote with your wallets. This is still an accurate thing to do here. That being said, if you want to see things change with Eververse, however, your reaction cannot be, we want to pay what an item is worth and not have to gamble for it, and then turn around and contradict yourself when they do try something different and alter your tune to Eververse just needs to go, or we didn't ask for this, what are you doing? Again, I think the idea is in the right spot with these bundles, but value is what absolutely kills them. Instead of, why am I spending $10 on this, the statement you're actually looking for here is, hey, this is way too much for one emote and two tokens. Let's get this system right because you're obviously crap at figuring it out. Also, going back to play Destiny 1 doesn't fix this or send a message to Bungie or Activision. You're still taking part in the Destiny universe and showing your interest those numbers are still being factored into this. The feeling of running back to the old game simply shows them you still have interest. And that's the total joke with the statement. Bungie still knows you have interest. I'm also personally coming from the perspective of paying for an MMO for several years of my life, and I'm used to subscription fees to be able to play always online titles like this. That was usually $15 a month, plus having to pay for the expansions, generally at $40 or so, and the other parts of the game, like the base, of which was always $60. Of course, these values do change and so on, but it's just to kind of show where I'm coming from. I know that MMOs do have the possibility of giving you more content, but when I think about how much I've spent on World of Warcraft for a sub-fee or otherwise, this is why I have the perspective I do, and I'm okay with expansion packs and so on. But dear God, I was on Blizzard's case the moment they started $25 mounts. No. Just no, Blizzard. Stop it. I'm also not going to bring up Warframe because it's often considered that you can't compare Destiny and Warframe because, well, one's free to play and one's not. Hmm, isn't that funny? Well, I guess I won't be comparing them then. Additionally, Warframe still asks you for things like Prime Access. So there is still some stuff that you are paying for on a rather monthly or at least semi-monthly basis. I could easily blame the fans of Blizzard games for letting this get to where it is, not calling it out when it was necessarily needed to be, but that's pointing fingers and playing up supposition. Plus, I know that there were those that were out there that did voice their concerns, and they were kinda looked at funny. They feel like disconnected events, but I always remember who's back at HQ for Activision Blizzard, and who the models for Destiny 2's transaction systems are based from. What I'm saying, consumers have been willing in the past. This time, we put our foot down. Perhaps you should be asking yourselves what changed from the narrative over the past few years that this is now the norm to see, and it's cool to hate without reproach. But I digress. So now that we've said what we think about the bundle, Bungie, it's up to you to tell us where you want to go with it. Are you going to pull the system, or will you modify it to fit a bit more with the rest of the industry, your competition? Will you look into the other money that you've taken from your customers in the form of expansions and DLC packs, or are you really going to just doom yourself to being looked at as that guy in the industry? You need someone over there that isn't going to agree with you and tell you, hey, this is going to get a lot of anger, and to help tell you why that is. If there already is, and I know for a fact that there is, then you need to listen to them, because they're right. As someone that enjoys what's been crafted with Warmind and has brought me back to playing the game, I will say it again. They're right. Stop making yourself look like garbage and an outraged fanbase. That's the position you're in. That's the truth of it. 
Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough here, and I hope my thoughts do enough to shed some light on the situation. I know that not everyone will agree with me, but I know my feelings are generally not the norm of this industry and the narrative being crafted by those that are out there. I try to be a bit more balanced and attempt to see both sides and kind of grab back into what the community has actually stated versus what they think they stated. I'm going to go back to work on Guardian School now, but if you can let me know your opinions and ideas below, I'd love to hear them. Well, so long as they're not concerning something you're going to do to my family or otherwise, in which case you're only making yourself look bad. I don't know what to tell you about subscribing anymore either. If you really want something to really get mad about and you care about watching YouTube and the content creators that you subscribe to, then go check out what they're doing to your subscription feeds. Both are worthy causes to voice, however. Until next FaceTime, Guardians and non-Guardians alike, take care. <laughs>